going to highlight a few of the important skills that we're trying to learn in Logic Pro. It should go without saying that what we're doing now is actually an example of what you could do with your own films, your own trailers that you might edit. Anything that comes from Final Cut Pro can be exported as an H.264 file like we've done 50 times and then brought into Logic so that we can do some of these skills. What we're going to look at is how to open a movie. We're going to talk about what it means to spot a movie. Then we're going to talk about beat mapping in Logic. That's where you take a specific area of the video and you try to line it up to a beat in the music. Last thing we're going to do is talk about exporting this file with your music attached. So we're going to begin with a new project and we're just going to choose empty project. You see right here there's music for picture. Well I'm going to go ahead and start with an empty project because I'm pro level so we're going to talk about how we could do this on the pro level. So go ahead and start with an empty project. And it doesn't matter what we do on this page because we're going to get into adding our own instruments later on. But I'm just going to say maybe four software instrument tracks to get me started. First thing I want to do is go to the file menu and choose movie, open movie. By now you will have checked out the many trailers that are in that Google Drive folder and you'll find one that works for you. I'm going to start with one that was a little bit older. This is one that we used back in the day and this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, kind of throwback, Mr. Harrell's era. And we want to leave both these options selected. Open the movie, extract the audio track, choose OK. Right here I'm going to go ahead and change my project to match. Here I'm going to click use the frame rate that matches the trailer. So here I have my trailer. I can close that trailer and it goes into the inspector area where it can be hidden or revealed again. What happens if I want to view it? Double click it from the inspector area. Close it down. Double click. There's your first skill. I'm going to go ahead and expand this track just a little bit. And I could right click on this and I've got some options here. Or I could choose this shortcut Option G. So I'm going to go ahead and click Option G because I want to learn that shortcut. And from this menu I'm going to choose Tempo, I'm going to choose Beat Mapping, and I'm going to choose Marker. Now these are all things that are really important for us to start to build maybe an outline for our film score. In the case of this particular trailer, I know that I want it to happen in three different sections. So there's this kind of slow ambient section that takes place here at the beginning. Go ahead and click that a little bit larger, double click so you can view it. And then it gets into a tempo in this section right here. So let's take a look at beat mapping. The first thing I want to do is I want to find the significant frame of the video and make a marker on that frame. So like I said, I've already watched this and I've decided this is going to kind of move along in three parts. There's this sort of slow part and then I want to get into an up-tempo thing. So I'm going to go from slow, mysterious, what's happening, what's happening. There's some crazy turtles here that have like some sort of ninja regalia on. Then we get into a tempo. So I want that new tempo to kick in, let's say right there where that screen gets a little bit brighter. And then in just a second, I'm going to see the turtles shadows up against the buildings. So with the playhead parked right where I want it, I'm going to go to navigate, create marker without rounding. Almost clicked on create marker there create marker without rounding. So what happens if you create a marker the other way? It'll actually lock into one of the places where logic is designed to lock based on this smart snapping. So what that did is that made a marker right where I wanted it. Now if I click the list editor and open that, I can select markers and I can double click on this marker and I can give it a name that's perhaps a little bit more helpful than marker one. With that marker, I want to go into the options menu and I want to lock it to SMPTE. 
Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. It's time code. Basically, that's going to lock it to the video. And now for the purposes of this beat mapping exercise, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the video. I'm going to get this list out of my way. And then I'm going to use command and right arrow to zoom in just a little bit. Maybe even command and down arrow just because I want to take a look maybe at the waveform. And so I'm zooming in to this area and I'm going to reposition the playhead. Now take a look. This beat mapping that we've got here is not terribly user friendly. It's a little bit confusing. So watch what happens. Number one, I've got the marker selected. That's what I want to make sure is happening first. If I don't have the marker selected, then I'm not seeing this little notch down here. Now watch when I select the marker. By clicking it, I get this little notch in the beat mapping lane of logic. So I look really carefully at this notch and I notice that it's kind of close to measure 18 or measure 18 beat three. It's kind of right in between there. So it's on beat two of measure 18. Well, let's say I want it to hit right on measure 18. That's what beat mapping is. So if this is an orchestral score, it's a lot easier to have a group of musicians play music together on a downbeat instead of trying to hit some other random spot in between a measure. So this is beat mapping. And what it's going to do is it's going to help line our music up to the things that we see visually. So watch what happens when we beat map. Here's the marker selected. I've got a little mark in the lane of the beat mapping and I want it to line up to measure 18. So right here on 18, I'm gonna click and hold and I get a little pointer, but nothing really seems to happen until I draw it all the way over to that little skinny tick mark. Now, I haven't let go yet because I want us to really savor what's happening here. As I let go, click. What it did is it adjusted the tempo from the beginning so that measure 18 would line up with that marker. So we've got a tempo of 118.2622, well, whatever it takes to line up that particular frame with measure 18. So now I can use the tempo to click there and I can turn that tempo up a little bit. I've watched it a few times and I've decided something in the neighborhood of 150 kind of moves along with the pulse of the music. So that is beat mapping in a nutshell. On this particular track, I need to do that one more time. So I'm gonna skip down to the end and I'm gonna beat map one more time and I'll walk you through it again. Now I've moved the playhead to the end of this particular trailer where I know I need one more new tempo. So I have this fast moving section in the middle then I'm gonna go back to a slower section at the end. So I've put my playhead in the spot where I think the tempo should be slow and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it hit right here, okay? So, well, it turns out, boy, that's really close. I'm gonna make it hit maybe just a little bit before that, bam, right there. How about there? Now I'm gonna do much the same thing. I'm gonna go to Navigate. I'm gonna go to Other, Create Without Rounding. I'm gonna open the list because I like to keep it organized. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna double click slow ending tempo I'm gonna click done what do I need to do lock it to the time code now I can get that out of my way I can even get this out of my way I'm gonna use command plus to zoom in a little bit now I need to be careful when I go to beat map on this second tempo area I could get a new tempo put in here because Logic doesn't know that it can change the tempo somewhere else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little node on the tempo with my mouse pointer, and that's gonna give Logic permission to change the tempo right here instead of on the faster tempo that I wanted earlier. I'm gonna do the beat mapping like I did before by selecting the marker, and in this case, I'm gonna lock it into measure 40. Click and drag. So what it did was it kept that tempo that I had all the way back here at the beginning. Where'd it go? Okay, so that's the tempo that I had adjusted to. And then it made a new tempo right here so that measure 40 would hit there. So I'm gonna click 
and then I'm gonna pull down the tempo to a really slow tempo that I wanted it to end with. So now what I've got here in this little area, it's half a measure long and it just goes ramp. It just sort of ramps up the tempo super fast so that I can get that measure to hit. And so musicians maybe would play this part slower and then maybe hold out a note here and then try to hit measure 40. Well, for now, I'm just gonna leave it that way because I know I'm gonna make some music that's gonna pretty much stop right here and there's gonna be some effects and stuff and then bam, it's gonna be some nice slow music, maybe some drums, that sort of thing that's gonna hit here at the end. Okay, so now I can step back and I can look at my trailer, which I've decided has three different tempos. This beginning tempo is kind of irrelevant because I'm gonna make it sort of sustained and there's not gonna be a lot happening in terms of music and then there's gonna be a beat that hits in here and then right here at the end, this little section is kind of, it just sort of connects these two areas and then bam, it's gonna be slow there. So I'm gonna get into this and I'm gonna to start to shape my trailer based on these three sections. So before we save this as a new file, and this is the exact procedure you might do if you wanted to share this with someone, give them an example of what this trailer music sounded like that you're working on, because this is kind of like a smaller file size. If you're really producing this for production, you would want to export this music as the fullest quality file you can. AIF, 48,000 samples on our computers is going to be fine. We would send it over to Final Cut Pro, put it together over there. That's the way we would do it. Of course, if we were doing this professionally, we would have a mastering engineer, mixing engineer that would take it to new heights. Well, the way we're going to do it for this particular project is to start by muting this audio that we imported because we're going to send our audio to the movie as it already existed. So the movie already had that audio on it. We're going to mute it in Logic here. File menu. Movie. Export audio to movie. And here you're going to change it so that it has your name in the file perhaps. Always a smart thing to do. On this screen. Make sure you click Enabled, and that way it keeps that audio the way it is. And now you've got your own music to a trailer from Hollywood. You're big time now. Nicely done.